Well, hello everybody. Um, t today I'm trying to try out doing it on my 4K camera um, with my headset. I hope the sound is okay. It's the devil has been fighting me every step of the way. Um, please pardon any interruptions, you know, like phone going off or anything like that. And if the sound quality is low, please forgive me. I've been fighting the devil on this one every time I go to do a video. So I, um, we're on chapter 16. If I didn't mess that up too, I believe it's chapter 16. Uh, yes, that's why I had my marker. So that's got to be it. <laughs> okay. Let's get into it. Got my coffee. I hope you're all having a blessed day. And I hope you've all been enjoying my other videos I've been putting up. Um, I also remember... Um, if you're a new subscriber, to please hit the subscribe button if you haven't, or a new watcher, I mean. And um, also hit the like button on every video that you watch. And also, if you are a subscriber, please click the subscribe button and check and see if you got the all with the parentheses around the word so that you get notified because YouTube is doing some funny things lately. So anyway, um, let's get on with it. Chapter 16. The Pharisees and Sadducees came to Jesus and tested him by, say, by asking him to show them a sign from heaven. He replied, when evening comes, you say, it will be fair weather for the sky is red. And in the morning, <laughs> today it will be stormy for the sky is red and overcast. You know how to interpret the appearance of the sky, but you cannot interpret the signs of the times. A wicked and adulterous generation looks for a miraculous sign, but none will be given, given it, except the sign of Jonah. Jesus then left them and went away. When he went across the lake, the disciples forgot forgot to take bread. Be careful, Jesus said to them, be on your guard against the yeast of the Pharisees and Sadducees. They discussed this among themselves and said, it's because we don't bring any bread? <laughs> Aware of the discussion, Jesus asked, you have little faith. Why are you talking amongst yourselves about having no bread? Do you still not understand? Do you remember the five loaves for the 5,000 and how many baskets fulls you gathered? Or the seven loaves for the 4,000 and how many basket fulls you gathered? How is it you, you, do, you do not understand that I was not talking about bread? But on, be on your guard against the yeast of the Pharisees and Sadducees. They are. Uh, then they understood he was not telling them to guard against the yeast used in bread, but against the teaching of the Pharisees and Sadducees. When Jesus came to a region of Caesarea, Philippi, he asked the disciples, Who do you say the Son of Man is? They replied, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. But what about you, he asked, who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus replied, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah. For this was not revealed to you by man, but by my Father in heaven. And I tell you that you, <clears throat> and I tell you that you are Peter, 
and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and what do you, whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he warned the disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Christ. From that time on, Jesus began to explain to his disciples, excuse me, oops, yeah, that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things at the hands of the elders, chief priests, and teachers of the law, and that he must be killed, and on the third day be raised to life. Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. Never, Lord, he said, this shall never happen to you. Jesus turned and said to Peter, get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me. You do not, you do not have in mind the things of God, but the things of men. Then Jesus said to his disciples, if anyone would, would come after me, he must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. For whoever wants to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for me will find it. What good would it be for a man if he gains the whole world yet forfeits his soul? Or what can a man give in exchange for his soul? For the Son of Man is going to is going to come to his father's glory and his angels, and then he will reward each person according to their what he has done. I tell you the truth. Some who are standing here will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. <sighs> Amazing. After six days, Jesus took with him Peter, James, and John, the brother of James, and led them up, and the brother of James, and led them up a high mountain by themselves. There he was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun, and his clothes became as white as the light. Just then there appeared before them Moses and Elijah talking to Jesus. Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, I will put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, a bright cloud enveloped them. And a voice from the cloud said, This is my son, whom I love. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell face down on the ground, terrified. But Jesus came and touched them. Get up, he said. Don't be afraid. When they looked up, they saw no one except Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus instructed them, Don't tell anyone what you've seen until the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. The disciples asked him, Why then do the uh, teachers of the law... <coughs> Excuse me, it must have been loud. Uh, say that Elijah must come first. Jesus replied, To be sure, Elijah comes and will restore all things. But I tell you, Elijah has, al Elijah has already come, and they did not recognize him. But have done to him everything they wished, in the same way the Son of Man is going to suffer, at their hands. Then the disciples understood what he was talking about, that he was talking about John the Baptist. When they came to the crowd, a young man approached Jesus and knelt before him. 
Lord, have mercy on my son, he said. He has seizures and is suffering greatly. He often falls into the fire or into the water. I brought him to your disciples, but they could not heal him. Pages sticking together. There we go. Oh, unbelieving and perverse generation, Jesus replied, How long shall I stay with you? How long shall I put up with you? Bring, bring the boy here to me. Jesus rebuked the demon, and it came out of the boy, and he was healed from that moment. Then the disciples came to Jesus in private and asked, Why couldn't we drive it out? He replied, Because you have so little faith. I tell you the truth. If you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, Move from here to there, and it will move. Nothing will be impossible for you. When they came together in Galilee, he said to them, The Son of Man is going to be betrayed into the hands of men. They will kill him, and on the third day he will rise to life, be raised to life. And the disciples were filled with grief, just like I am. After Jesus and his disciples arrived in Capernaum, the collectors of the two two drachma tax <laughs> collectors of the two drachma tax came to Peter and asked, "Doesn't your teacher pay the temple tax?" "Yes, he does," they replied. When Peter came into the house, Jesus was the first to speak. "What do you think, Simon?" he asked. From um. Make sure my things still, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. From whom do the kings of the north collect duty and taxes? From their own sons or from others? From others, Peter answered. Then the sons are exempt. Jesus said to him, But so that we may not offend them, go to the lake and throw out your line and take the first fish, you catch, open its mouth, and you will find four drachma coin in it. Coin, take it and give it to them for my tax and yours. At the time, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, "Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven?" He called a little child and had him stand among them. He said, I tell you the truth, unless you change and become like the little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Key point. Therefore, who, whoever humbles himself like this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whoever welcomes a little child like this in my name welcomes me. But if anyone causes any of these little ones who believe in me to sin, it would be better for them to have a large millstone hung around their neck and to be drowned in the depths of the sea. Woe to the world because of the things that cause people to sin. Such things must come, but woe to the man to whom they come. If your hand or foot causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. It's better for you to enter life maimed or crippled than to have two hands or feet and be thrown into eternal fire. And if your eye causes you to sin, gouge it out and throw it away. It's better for you to enter life with one eye than to have two eyes and be thrown into hell, the fire of hell. See that you do not look down on one of these little ones, for I tell you that their angels in heaven always see the face of my Father in heaven. What do you think if a man owns a hundred sheep, but one of them wanders away? Will he not leave the ninety-nine on the hills and go look for the one that wandered off? 
And if he finds it, I tell you the truth. He is happier about that one sheep than about the 99 that did not wander off. In the same way, your Father in heaven is not willing that any of these little ones should be lost. If your brother sins against you, go and show him his fault just between the two of you. If he listens to you, you have won your brother over. But if he will not listen to you, take one or two others along, and that, so that every matter may be established by testimony of two or three witnesses. If he refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if he refuses to listen to the church, treat him as you would a pagan or tax collector. I tell you the truth. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, again, I tell you that if two of you, that if two of you on earth agree about anything you ask for, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three come together in my name, there I am with them. Then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother when he sins against me? Up to seven times? Jesus answered, I tell you, not seven times, but 77 times. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a king who wanted to settle in accounts, accounts with his servants. As he began to settle the settlement, a man who owed him 10,000 talents, was brought to him. Since he was not able to pay, the master ordered that the, he and his wife and his children and all that he had, he had sold to repay the debt. Oh, and all that he had sold to repay the debt. There we go. The servant fell on his knees before him. Be patient with me. He begged, and I will pay back everything. The servant's master took pity on him, canceled the debt, and let him go. But when that servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred denarii. He grabbed him and began to choke him. Pay back what you owe me, he demanded. His fellow servant fell to his knees and begged him, Be patient with me, and I will pay you back. But he refused. Instead, he went off and had the man thrown into prison until he could pay the debt. When the other servants saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed and went, went and told their master everything that had happened. Then the master called the servant in. You wicked servant, he said. I canceled all your debt, all that debt of yours, because you begged me. Shouldn't you have had mercy on your fellow servant, just as I had on you? In anger, his mother turned to him. His master turned to him, not mother. His master turned to him, turned him over to the jailers to be tortured until he could pay back what he, all he owed. This is how my heavenly Father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brother from your heart. Amen. And we will pick up next time on chapter 19. I have to make sure I say it in the video in case I forget where it was. Um, chapter 19 next time. If you'll notice in my videos, I don't express my opinions. I don't put my words in there because God's word doesn't need help. It's capable of doing whatever he wants it to do on its own. I, I don't put my own things in there. So let me just say I'm Grandpa Campy. I like I always say whatever you do in life make a difference and I really really believe that um, we should all do that. 
Look for some way to be a blessing to someone else and live your life with intention every day. Don't just get up and, and live haphazardly. Live it intentionally. Pick out something you want to do for the, to the Lord or, you know, something like that and go for it with everything you have. And until next time, remember, Jesus loves you and so do I. Bye now.